Thanks to Mova Globes for sponsoring this video. More on them in just a bit. In this Cape flyover, we saw loads of activity from Blue Origin, and not that much from SpaceX. Does this mean that New Glenn is catching up to Starship? I think no, but it is still extremely interesting to see everything that's going on on Blue Origin's side. Plus, we have everything else that's going on at the Cape to talk about. So let's jump right into it. Let's start it all off talking with Adrian about SpaceX's Roberts Road facility. In contrast to previous flyovers, we now lack parts for these mega bays that were previously at the Roberts Road facility. They are now maybe at Starbase, where they started to build the second mega bay. However, it could also be that these parts are unrelated to each other. In contrast to Starbase, where we see rapid progress on the second mega bay, not really anything was done on the mega bay building at the Roberts Road facility. The yellow crane that was previously at Roberts Road for Mega Bay construction is now dismantled. This gives more power to the theory that these parts are indeed now being used at Starbase and no further progress will be made here in the very near future. Eric Berger on Ars Technica published that SpaceX may have won the lease of High Bay 1 and the VAB and it would be used for processing and storage of complete vehicles. Perhaps SpaceX may not need a mega bay here anytime soon, as the first boosters and ships could be transported via boat from Starbase to Florida. Something that Elon had already mentioned last year. They could already be fully stacked with no need for welding or further constructions, so these vehicles could be then stored and processed in the web for flight after shipping. As we have mentioned in the last flyover, the chopsticks are now on their site in preparation for the installation of the mechanism needed for stacking and catching Starship vehicles. This involves installing the rails where the booster lift points will be sitting on, all the actuators to adjust the position and many more things such as the power lines and hydraulics for the actuation of these systems. Another interesting spot here is that the carriage system for the chopsticks is white. Could this mean that the second tower will carry the signature SpaceX black and white in contrast to the more all black tower in Starbase? Let's take a look at LC-49, a place where SpaceX plans to launch Starship vehicles in the future. It's been 18 months since NASA revealed it would conduct environmental assessments on LC-49 to support Starship launch and landing operations, a process that was set to take a year. Since then, there hasn't been any updates or signs of work at the north side of 39B. So I guess they will finish other places first, before they start obvious work at the LC-49 area. And that's all for Roberts Road for today, back to you. Thanks Adrian. Hey Das, I hear you're over at Starbase with something pretty awesome. Care to tell us more? We're always sharing awesome stuff with you on the channel, but this time we're gonna show you something that you can actually take home. I'm not talking about the orbital launch mount after the flight. I'm also not talking about a piece of concrete from the orbital launch mount after flight. Today I wanna to show you this Mova Globe. It's awesome because it was a product that I had at home long before they ever reached out to sponsor this video. It seems like it's magic going around in circles like this, but it's not. It's sufficiently advanced technology. Here's how it works. The Mova Globe actually has solar panels inside that when exposed to light, power a little electromagnetic motor. The electromagnetic motor aligns with the magnetic field of the Earth and causes the globe to spin. It doesn't need any external wires or batteries or special stand for the illusion. It's all self-contained in the globe itself. They have all sorts of different designs. This one's an Earth, since it's here on Earth. I guess that's where most of the Starship ended up. They also have Mars, they have the Moon, other celestial bodies. Check out the website, there's all sorts of things to choose from. You can put it on your nearest piece of orbital launch mount debris, or if you don't have one of those handy, shelf or table works as well. It really makes an awesome centerpiece. Like I said, I've got one at my house, and whenever somebody comes over and they see it, it's a whole conversation starter about the Earth, or science, or magnets, or however things work. You can help us continue our awesome coverage of events like this, and have a cool centerpiece to show off to your friends by using the code below to get 10% off the six or eight and a half inch globes. It really is an awesome centerpiece to put somewhere in your house and show off to all your friends and family how much you love science or engineering. Why not both? 
These things actually are really cool. Holy horses, I need one of those. Thanks to Mova for giving us 10% off. I'm gonna order one as soon as I get home. All right, next up, we've got Ryan to talk to us about Blue Origin and some other things. Take it away, Ryan. We have some exciting Blue Origin updates for you today, so let's get into it. Blue's campus at Exploration Park has been a hive of activity lately. First up, we spotted a new Glen second stage in the Two Cat building. Well, this isn't the first time we've seen a second stage for New Glen, it is the first time we've seen one in the second stage cleaning and testing facility. Aside from being in 2CAT, how do we know this is a second stage? Looking closely at the top of the tank, we can see this interface. This was also seen on the stage demonstrator tank we saw at LC36 last year. You can also see the connections where the LOX and LH2 tanks join. It's expected that this stage will undergo pressure testing next. As you can tell, compared to the last second stage we saw, this one lacks insulation and looks very bare. It's likely that after testing in 2CAT is complete, the stage will move into the surface coating facility to receive its insulation. Not far from 2CAT, we spotted a door open at the TCAT facility. TCAT is built for cleaning and testing New Glenn's first stages. You can think of it like 2CAT's big sibling. Looking through the open door, we were able to spot another tank section. Since we can only see the bottom of the tank, we can't be certain on exactly what it is. However, it's likely that this is one of the tanks for New Glenn's first stage, or maybe even the whole booster. If it is, we could be looking at enough hardware for a full New Glenn rocket. Even if this isn't flight hardware, we may see these sections integrated at LC36 in the future to undergo full stack testing. Moving to the south end of the campus, the Reef Pathfinder building now has a complete exterior. The same also goes for the warehouse expansion. At the warehouse, we got lucky and had another open door. Peeking through this door, we were able to see a transporter carrying some hardware inside of the building. This looks to be a covered barrel section for New Glen. We're all very excited to see so much hardware and activity from Blue, but we're not done just yet. Let's hop over to the launch site. At Launch Complex 36, Blue Origin's launch site for New Glen and beyond, there are more signs of activity. Earlier this week, our own Max Evans spotted a new structure out on the pad. From this angle, it appeared to be one of the New Glen simulator sections. A few days later, Stephen Marr captured the section now vertical on the pad. With the flyover, we were able to get even clearer shots of what's going on. From the sky, we were able to see that this seems to be a New Glenn second stage simulator on some sort of mini transporter erector. Remember that mystery structure we kept seeing outside of the hangar at LC36? This is most likely it. We expect that this structure will be used to test the upper stages of New Glenn on the launch pad before they're integrated on top of the booster. This would make a lot of sense as the large flame diverter here is similar to a lot of engine test stands, so why not use it for exactly that? Plus, it would save shipping the stages to somewhere like the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi and back again. This will be interesting to keep an eye on in the future and we'll see what we can learn about their testing process. Towards the northern end of the launch complex, we were able to spot the newest Clipper tank now sitting on its test stand. Clipper, also known as Jarvis, is a program by Blue to focus on the rapid development of a fully reusable upper stage for New Glen. We saw this particular tank section in our last flyover when it was over by the Tent City. Since then, it has been moved over to a test stand where we've seen at least two stages in the past. Here, we expect the stage to go through pressure testing and maybe even cryo testing. Look closely and you can even see the header tank on top of the stage. While there isn't too much to see at Relativity's Launch Complex 16 since the launch of Terran 1 at the end of March, it's worth noting that the company has released a render showing their vision for the future of the launch complex. Relativity stated that, quote, the company plans to build a secondary launch pad adjacent to its existing Terran 1 test and launch facilities. After completion of production and initial structural protoqualification testing in Long Beach, Terran R vehicles will travel by sea through the Panama Canal to Mississippi for testing and then to Florida for launch. Reused boosters will stay in Florida and be rapidly refurbished for additional launches. Needless to say, Relativity will be bringing more excitement back to the Space Coast once they're ready with Terran R. Thanks, Ryan. Wow, that is tons of activity from Blue Origin and Relativity. Now, let's talk to Adrian about what SpaceX is doing at LC-39A, Slick 40, and the Port of Canaveral. Take it away, Adrian. Thank you. Time for some launch pads. 
No major changes for now at pad 39A, especially on the chopstick tower. However, you can see that some of the scaffolding connecting the different parts of the tower has been taken down. There's probably more detailed work going on at the tower right now, but sadly, due to restricted access to uh, the cape in contrast to Boca and also our cameras being way further away, we cannot really look into the details of what is going on at the tower. The big yellow crane at pad 39A is still there, however, it is dismantled at this point. So make sure to catch once they assemble it again in the future. Once that happens, that probably means business for ongoing tower construction at the Cape. But for now, it's in a disassembled state. The Falcon Strongback is now in its post-launch configuration after the successful launch of the Falcon Heavy Viasat mission. Up next are either the CRS-28 mission or the Axiom mission. Both would mean that it needs to go into a single stick configuration for Falcon 9, launching a Dragon capsule. Over at Slick 40, you can see that there's still work going on at the area where the future crew launch tower will be erected. However, as of now we don't see any segments going up, but it looks like that might happen in Dana. So stay tuned for the next flyover to find out once that starts. Port Canaveral looked almost empty when we flew over it. A shortfall of Gravitas has added out to the sea to support booster recovery for Starlink Group 5-6, while just read the instructions were still coming back from supporting booster recovery for the O3B Empower mission a few days before. Dark was out supporting recovery of the fairing halves from VSL 3 quite a long distance away at almost 2000 kilometers from Port Canaveral. Bob had just come home into port with freshly recovered fairing halves from that mission and would go out again soon after to support recovery for the Starlink Group 5-6 mission. Dragon recovery vessels Megan and Shannon were in port, awaiting their next mission to support, hopefully in the next month or so. And that's it, back to you. Thanks Adrian. See, we really weren't kidding when we said not a lot is going on with SpaceX on the Space Coast right now. Other than, you know, of course, launching a whole bunch of Falcon 9s. Next up, let's talk about ULA and Slick 37B. Delta IV Heavy is still awaiting its penultimate launch. We still don't know what the issue was that delayed the penultimate launch of the Heavy Orange rocket, but here's hoping it's solved soon and ULA can finally launch the NROL-68 mission. You may remember from the last flyover that we saw ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket on the pad out at Slick 41. In this flyover, Vulcan wasn't there, and we might not see it back on the pad for a little while as Tori Bruno mentioned they had found a slight issue with the Centaur during testing on the pad. Now don't confuse this with a much larger issue ULA had on the test stand at Marshall Space Flight Center with a Centaur test article. While that test might also affect Vulcan's schedule, it seems like the rocket was already on its way to a delay before that. Tori Bruno now says this launch may come in the June-July timeframe right before the launch of Boeing's Starliner crew flight test. Next up, at the launch and landing facility, we can see really good progress on Space Florida's Project Comet, which will become a payload processing facility for an as of yet undisclosed customer. Aside from general improvements around the site like continued land clearing and retention ponds, we can see the pilings for the building foundations sticking out of the ground. Looking closer, we can even see crews working hard on starting with the outline of the building itself. Next up, after our last flyover in late March, Firefly Aerospace submitted plans for a launch site at Slick 20. The plans show that Firefly will build a new launch pad for their rocket, as well as more retention ponds, a fuel yard, and more. As noted in our previous flyovers, work is currently underway at Slick 20 to prepare the pad for its new look. Needless to say, there are many exciting projects going on in the area. Well, that's it for this flight around the Space Coast. Thanks again to Mova Globes for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out, they're really cool, and you can get 10% off their 6-inch or 8.5-inch globes by using the code NSF10 at movaglobes.com. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments. What were the highlights? What were the lowlights? We want to hear you. And of course, check out this video, or maybe that video. Alright, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.